Hi, this is Lloyd Pye. People often ask me, if aliens were ever here on Earth, where's the proof? Where are their fingerprints? My answer is always the same. They're everywhere. Just look at the megalithic structures around the world. This presentation will hopefully give you a better understanding of how absurd it is to believe that primitive Stone Age people using fiber ropes and stone tools could build structures like the pyramids and all the other megaliths around the world. The audio is an excerpt from one of my presentations on the subject of human origins. The slides illustrate what I was talking about. I hope you have fun with and are enlightened by Megaliths, Proof of Alien Intervention. We're starting with, just as an example, the megalithic walls at Saxon If I was standing right here, my head would be about where yours too would be about where that white spot is. I, should, I wish I had a shot of with somebody there, but this is huge, huge in the mountains of Peru. But you have them in Tiwanaku in Bolivia. You have them in Baalbek in Lebanon. 2,000 tons! <laughs> 2,000 tons in Baalbek in Lebanon. These are just hundreds of tons. But it's, it's just impossible for human beings to do this. The tolerances are just incredible when you get there. You reach your hand. Sometimes earthquakes have spread some of the rocks. You reach your hand in there. It feels like a baby's bottom, perfectly smooth. We can't do that. The one that everybody looks at is the pyramids. Now, you need to know two numbers for the Giza Plateau. A hundred years, this is what they insist, the Egyptologists insist that the three pyramids and the Sphinx were all built within a hundred years. The lifetimes of three pharaohs. And six million stones conservatively. If you go by just the counts of the layers and you work it out, people have done that. It's between six and seven million stones, they estimate. If you go the low ball figure, six million stones, let's go with those two numbers. A hundred years, six million stones. 24 hours a day, 24 hours a day, every day, every minute of every day for those hundred years to make this happen according to the Egyptologist schedule, every eight and a half minutes a stone has to go into place. Night and day, night and day. It is so absurd, it is so incredibly absurd, I can't believe that people just sit there and go to conferences like this, and every one of them in the room has got a PhD after his name, and they sit there and say, uh-huh, uh-huh, wow, okay, cool. <laughs> stupid, stupid, stupid. <laughs> That's what I said. Just keep those two numbers in mind. 100 years, 6 million stones, ridiculous. Look at this, the Great Pyramids used to be covered with limestone, polished limestone, shining so perfectly, fit together so perfectly, it glared in the sun for 20, 25 miles on a bright day. Look at the precision. You can't get the tip of a knife blade in. You can't, they left a few down at the bottom. You, you can, if you ever go there, if you've ever been there, you've seen these few. They didn't strip them all off, they stripped them off to build the buildings of Cairo. One of the great ratings of treasures of history that there's been, but nonetheless, at least they left a few so we could see kind of what it looked like. It's gorgeous. And if you go inside them, every, every tunnel in there, absolutely perfect. Perfect! Look, this is a scene between stones. No mortar, no mortar, perfect. The pyramids were Rolex watches built to the size of mountains. That's what they were. Totally impossible for human beings to do that today. And we're supposed to believe that Stone Age people using fiber ropes and stone tools did this. Who are they kidding themselves? Because they might. The Sphinx, another one. You've all heard about the weathering of the stones, which clearly shows that this is caused by water erosion. And the desert of that area, Giza, has been dry for at least 8,000 years. So the bare, bare minimum that this could have been carved out to cause this to happen this way would be 10,000 years, and probably it's more like 15,000 years. 15,000 years ago. So right away, this is showing that the Egyptologist thing is, is completely wrong. And yet, when this came out, when this hit the airwaves in a great documentary called History of the Sphinx, they just about died. 
scientists went nuts that they hadn't been consulted so that they, they could have informed the network that this was completely wrong and had no business being put on the air because it enlightened the great unwashed. <laughs> Can't have that. Oh, I just get so furious at this. Anyway, this is, this is what they did. They cut this out and they took the stones and they built two temples in front of the Sphinx Temple and the Valley Temple. All right, if you go there, you'll see them. And you've got, here's the Sphinx here, and you've got the Sphinx Temple, Valley Temple, and then you see the size of the stones again. <laughs> Pretty doggone big. you got bigger stones, of course, in the inside of the interior, but, you know, still, they're pretty doggone big. Here we see a 170 ton stone in the wall in the valley. This is back when I had a lot of hair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> Somebody else. Anyway, the point is, here you go. 170 tons. It looks bad now because the limestone's been stripped off it, but it was covered too perfectly. This will move 175 tons. This is what it would take to move that stone you just saw for us today. It would take a couple days to set up and get ready and you know actually make the lift and put the stone in place. But 175 tons, you know, can do it. That 170 ton stone could have been done by us today. It could have been moved into place. Okay, now look at this hummer right here. A 1,170 ton obelisk lies unfinished at the Aswan Quarry, a crack ran into the stone and unusable. Now, there are a lot of these around e e Egypt, these, these uh, obelisks like this. This isn't the only one. But this is the broken one. So what they were doing is digging it out, and you can see it's pretty well finished, except for this part right here. They were shaping the point of it, and whatever machine was on here, it was you know, just this is pink, pink granite, and they're just taking it out in chunks, whatever, whatever routing machine they had, certainly not stone tools making this happen. And they pressed too hard and they cracked it right through here. Just unbuckle the machine, whatever it was, let's just leave it. It's 15 feet in a hole. It's, the person taking the pictures up here, you can see the edge. It's in a hole. Now, the question you have to ask yourself is, how are you going to move a 1,170-ton obelisk? How are you going to move that? You ain't going to move that. Guess what else you're not going to do? You're not going to cut it loose from its base. There is no saw that would go through that that we have no diamond tip saw that would go because the weight would just stop the blade from spinning. Now, how did these primitive people do this? What bozo got the job of getting under there with his stone axe and going to look? <laughs> Can you see how absurd it is? It's just it's ridiculous. Here's what it would have taken to get a thousand tons up to that. A thousand tons. Imagine the logistics involved to get that stone up if you could cut it loose, which we couldn't do. Do you see how absurd it is?